Yeah, I came to Richmond Law straight out of college. I graduated from Lafayette College in Pennsylvania, uh, intending to practice law. I, I knew I was going to be an international lawyer, even though I couldn't have told you at the time what international lawyers did. Uh, I had visited Richmond and immediately fell in love with the campus, uh, with the team that I met, and started in the fall of 93, graduated in the spring of 96. Um, while here, in addition to taking classes and learning what it meant to be a lawyer, um, I founded the Richmond Journal of Law and Technology, along with a number of my classmates, uh, which we published during my second year and then got a second issue out uh, in my third year. So uh, in the winter of 95, so probably around January or February of 95, um, I had been active uh, in a number of communities that were discussing emerging law and technology. And there was a conference happening in San Francisco called the Computers Freedman Privacy Conference uh, that was an opportunity for me to network meet a number of people I'd been engaged with uh, digitally over email. And Dean Harbaugh, who was the dean at the time, uh, graciously agreed to fund the trip, which in retrospect turns out to have been a blessing because at that conference, I met some counterparts at both Harvard and University of Michigan law schools, both of whom had started their own journals of law and technology. Uh, Harvard's was called Jolt. I don't recall what Michigan's was, probably also Jolt. And it became pretty obvious, though no, no one was admitting exactly when they were planning to publish, that everyone was trying to publish before the end of the semester. I came home from that trip and told the team, there were uh, I think about 15 of us at the time working on Jolt, that we had to publish as quickly as possible because there was a chance we could be first. No one seemed to be days or weeks away from publishing. But if we weren't first, all anybody would remember was that Harvard had beat us. So we were very excited when on April 15th, we were first and we beat Harvard by a couple of weeks. Now Harvard's still Harvard, but we were the first to publish online. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the things that's most fulfilling to me when I think back on what uh, we as a founding team imagined we were starting, I don't think any of us thought in terms of decades. Uh, we really were thinking in terms of semesters. What are we doing next semester? What might the journal look like when there's another team that follows us? It is extraordinary to look back on 30 volumes and realize the hundreds of students who've contributed to legal scholarship that is meaningfully contributing to the profession every year. Um, as I think ahead, I can only hope that that continues to be true. And I think we've now earned the right to think not in terms of decades, but centuries. We're already well on our way to a hundred years of legal scholarship, which uh, it will well outlive any one of us that had been part of its founding uh, back in the mid 90s, which just fills me with immense gratitude and feels a real privilege to have been a small part of it. Yeah, you know, it, I took a non traditional path. I think one of the things that is certainly uh, it was hard to imagine at the time that I graduated uh, where my path would take me. I knew I was more passionate about the technology than I was strictly speaking about the practice of law. And I was hoping that what I had learned in part at Richmond about how to build something that was new, the journal, uh, would serve me well as I would go, go on in my career. I would keep in touch. I mean, as a proud 
parent. I'm one of the founders of Joel. And so it always was fun when I would see an update, whether it be on LinkedIn, or Facebook, or Twitter at the time, uh, to see what that current batch of students, the, the current editorial uh, staff had produced. Um, yeah, I've been privileged to work on a number of projects over the years where sometimes I knew things that were coming that weren't yet public. And occasionally when you see legal scholarship from be it a faculty member at another school, a student here, a practitioner in the field who is starting to anticipate things that might happen, uh, it's kind of wild when those paths intersect and you see that Joel is, is not just reflecting on things that have happened, but is looking ahead and imagining what will need to be true for the profession to keep pace with where the business uh, world is taking us. I think it, whatever you do in your career, it starts with what is, what makes you passionate? What are you excited about? If there's a problem that needs to be solved, if there's an opportunity that you spend a lot of time thinking about, um, that's an area that needs your energy, your enthusiasm, your passion. I didn't know what that looked like exactly for me as I was leaving Richmond. Initially, it was, I was passionate about tech and I had this legal background that told me that there were questions not yet answered by lawyers and other practitioners in the field. And that, that was a great bridge to get me from my Richmond Law education to my first handful of jobs. I think for any students thinking about an alternative career path, um, your career path is your career path. It's not alternative, it's yours. And it's alternative to what might be the norm uh, for a number of other students, but their norm doesn't need to be yours. Um, ultimately, that passion and enthusiasm, excitement, the, the constant thinking about and puzzling over how could I make this better, whatever this might be, if there's something that keeps you up at night, that's probably going to be the place that your career is pulling you, whether you realize it or not. Law taught me a thing. Uh, also, to the chagrin of family and some colleagues, how to argue. Uh, I think I got pretty good at it. Uh, but really, fundamentally, it's about how to think through hard problems. Uh, problems that don't always have easy answers, or sometimes have answers that contradict each other. Finding a way through that ambiguity, that potential for conflict, has served me extraordinarily well in the many years since I graduated. I look back on that time and feel very, very grateful that the school didn't allow me to explore this enthusiasm, this passion I had for creating Jolt along with my classmates. They encouraged it and created an environment where it wasn't just possible, it was likely and successful beyond our wildest dreams. When you find a place that encourages you, that, that makes it possible for you to do your best work, uh, that is the standard I hold myself to in the company I now run. My co-founder and I were talking last week about our aspiration is to create, build a company where our employees can do their best work. That is what I learned at Richmond. Uh, how could I not give back? How could I not come back here and share a little bit of that journey with current students here at the law school and at the undergrad campus as well to help them maybe see in my alternative path, uh, a path that might look like one they wanted to, to, to make their own.